Comrades and friends, the Republican National Convention, which nominated the white supremacist, fascistic Donald Trump as its presidential candidate, has added fire under an already burning cauldron a police war against black and brown people. On July 18th, the opening night of the RNC, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark labeled the Black Lives Matter movement as an, quote, anarchy, end quote, and had the racist crowd cheering as he gleefully announced the third acquittal of another cop accused of murdering Freddie Gray, a 25-year-old black man in Baltimore last year. Then Trump, during his 75-minute rant on July 21st, as he accepted the nomination, which took on the feel of a Ku Klux Klan rally, went on a vicious anti-immigrant tirade, along with deploring the killings of cops. But of course, he didn't mention the police killings of people of color. Ironically, just hours earlier in New York City, the Black Youth Project 100 and Million Hoodies NYC had heroically occupied the lower Manhattan offices of the racist Patrolmen's Benevolent Association to quote, call attention to the multiple institutions that hamper police accountability in the city. These groups and others are in the forefront of carrying out direct, in-your-face protest against police brutality. They promise more coordinated actions at police stations and offices around the country, indicating that they don't give a damn about who is running in the elections. The Workers' World Party 2016 election campaign issued a July 12th statement entitled Defend Black Lives Matter in the Police War on Black and Brown People. It reads in part, and I quote, in the aftermath of the Dallas shootings of police, the capitalist political establishment has so far, so far not been able to freeze out or push back the movement. It's not that they haven't tried. The pro-cop talking heads have been all over the media trying to blame and demonize the movement for cops killed in Dallas. And of course now, since then, Baton Rouge. The statement reinforced the fact that neither Trump nor the liberal facade of Hillary Clinton or even the ongoing police war have held back or silenced the Black Lives Matter struggle or di diminished its impact on other sectors of U.S. society that have, in have influence on the masses. Sports, for instance. Professional athletes have been vocal, especially on social media, about police brutality. These include National Basketball Association players Carmelo Anthony, Chris Paul, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James. Quarterback Colin Kaepernick characterized the murder of Alton Sterling as a, quote, lynching. But the action that has rightfully garnered the most recent attention in the sports world and social media came from team members in the Women's National Basketball Association. Following the Dallas shootings, Members of the New York Liberty, the Indiana Fever, and Phoenix Mercury wore warm-up t-shirts that listed the names of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, along with Black Lives Matter. On the back, along with hashtag Dallas Five in smaller type. And on the front of the t-shirts read, quote, change starts with us citing a violation of league rules and uniform guidelines the wnba hierarchy fined the liberty fever and mercury teams five thousand five thousand dollars each and fined individual players who wore these t-shirts five hundred dollars a piece 
Once the fines were announced, players from the Liberty and the Fever carried out a, quote, media blackout protest, which means that they would only take questions from the media about Black Lives Matter and their actions and not about basketball. They also created the hashtag, we will not be silenced. When these players refused to back down, a groundswell of support exploded for them, especially on social media, inside and outside the WNBA, and mainly around the Black Lives Matter slogan. While the WNBA is over 70% African American, high profile white players such as Sue Bird and Brianna Stewart from the Seattle Storm express solidarity on their Twitter feeds with the hashtag Black Lives Matter and quoted Dr. Martin Luther King's statement, quote, there comes a time when silence becomes betrayal, end quote. The Minnesota Lynx and the Washington Mystics players also voiced their support for their fine sisters. So this movement was just growing and growing. Carmelo Anthony spoke out saying that the fines were unjust and the National Action Network volunteered to pay the $5,000 fines. With so much outrage building for these players' right to free speech around the issue of police violence, the president of the WNBA, Lisa Borders, announced July 23rd that all fines would be rescinded. Many asked the important question, would these athletes have been fined in the first place if the issue of Black Lives Matter had not been raised so prominently as opposed to the issue of violence in general? Fever All-Star Tamika Catchings, who is also president of the WNBA Players Union, quotes stated, it's a huge win overall. I think more than anything, I told Lisa Borders, at times you're going to agree to disagree. With this, I'm really proud of the players standing strong and for utilizing their voices. Change starts with us. We have a social responsibility as well, end quote. Whether it's with direct action by shutting down interstates or police stations on the part of young activists or on the courts, athletes are using these arenas for their voices to be heard. And no one is waiting to see who wins the White House to, do, to carry out these actions. They'll keep building a movement against unjust killings and racial profiling in general by the police. Now, police may try to call their organizations, quote, unions, but the, the, but the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association and other police groups are not unions. The Marxist explanation of class society is that the role of police under capitalism is to violently suppress workers and oppress people who resist the horrors that capitalism imposes on them. Police are armed groups completely in the service of the capitalist state. Police associations like the Fraternal Order of Police advance state sanctioned violence in many ways. They lobby legislatively for the transfer of more military equipment to local departments. They block efforts to gather data on deaths in police custody and protect cops that abuse, rape, murder, steal, and worse, along with occupying whole communities. Not one cop has been convicted of any serious charge in any of the, in the many recent killings by police, not even in cases where illegal actions by cops have been documented on videotape. The capitalist legal system has held that the police are, quote, above the law because the cop's role is first and foremost to protect the power and property of the capitalist class. Cops are exempt from punishment because they act at the behest of their capitalist masters, 
who ultimately determine what is, quote, legal. The ongoing movement for black lives is intensifying the challenge to the structural role of police in maintaining an oppressive system. As the movement against racist state police terror expands, that challenge is growing. In our campaign, in the 2016 Moorhead Lilly election campaign, we say defund and disempower the police on to disarming and abolishing the police, defend Black Lives Matter.